It's a Delta with Clipper. It's a Delta with Clipper. It's a Delta with Clipper. This Delta has Clipper. This is the FL Sun V400, and it has Clipper, and it's a Delta. I'm very excited. I've had an infatuation with Deltas for a while. They're just so sleek looking. I mean, look at this thing. Okay, this one is certainly beefier than the others, but there is just something about them that you don't get with your average box style printer or bed slinger. They just can't compete with them. Deltas are not that common, but they've been around for a while. The raw stock and costal Delta printers are actually 10 years old this year. Still, Deltas never really got that mainstream in 3D printing. But now FL Sun are sort of leading the way and creating a bit of a ruckus with Delta printers. In the last three years, they've come out with the QQS Pro, the Q5, the SR last year, and now this wondrous beast, the V400. So, basic details first. The build volume is 300 millimeters in diameter with a Z height of 410 millimeters. And we have this lovely PEI plate, which is absolutely awesome. I'm so glad they've done this because the last one, the SR, had a glass plate, which I'm not that fond of. This is awesome. I just love how PEI plates are becoming the norm now. And we also have a filament sensor up here. Now these I've always found can be a little bit finicky, but we've tested numerous times and there's no resistance putting filament in. No issues with that at all. It was super smooth. It also has a dual drive gear extruder and also an all metal hot end with a bimetallic heat break that's good up to 300 C. The other thing that's really cool is this is a direct drive extruder. Traditionally, deltas just don't have direct drives. They need to keep the weight off the effector, that's this thing, so the vibrations don't affect it. But because this is a delta with clipper. So regarding the extruder, it is dual drive gear, as I said, and it has a thumb screw for adjustable tension, which is really cool. The one thing it does not have is a reachable gear that you can use to push in and out the filament. Uh, however, it does have an automatic function on the touchscreen, which is very cool. I always had issues trying to get this working for a TPU on a lot of printers because it has the same speed for retracts and, and push-ins. Uh, and that can be an issue for TPU because it has issues with higher speeds in general. Uh, but I have tested this and it works beautifully with TPU. The effector has two part cooling fans, which is probably to be expected on a high-speed printer. We're going to be doing some tests later to see how well it can cope with 400 millimeters per second. The V400 has a detachable leveling probe and it's very similar to the one on the Super Racer. Pretty much the same, I think, actually. Uh, it's very easy to install. All you do is put it in there. It has a magnetic clip and there is a probe directly underneath the nozzle. Works the same way as the BL Touch. I was initially skeptical of this probe because I didn't like the idea of detaching and reattaching a probe every time I use the printer. But it's actually been fine because the bed is so rigid and stationary, I've actually only had to level this once. I mean, it's normal for deltas to have a stationary bed that would be really weird otherwise uh, but so many printers just don't have this like I don't think any Creality printer has a stationary bed I can only think of Voron printers actually that have stationary beds that are Cartesian or Core XY yeah for the motion system the V400 uses these groove bearings that are set into the back of the aluminium extrusions this seems to be a rather original thing I don't think I've ever seen another printer uh, like this it's basically a, a ball bearing but with these V-shaped grooves in it that slide up and down rails. So it's not a linear rail, and I was expecting to see a linear rail in this because the SR had one and linear rails are just a go-to thing when you have a high-speed printer. But it doesn't seem to have any effect on the stability or speed of the printer. In fact, it works really, really well. If anyone has any experience with using these kinds of motion systems on printers, I would really like to know more about it. Here we can also create time lapses, and while we're only using a low FPS res webcam, it is still really cool because I can keep an eye on prints when the V400 is down in the workshop and I'm at my desk. As cool as the clipper screen is, it is sort of redundant when you have the Wi-Fi interface. I actually only use the screen when getting started and haven't looked at it since except for a filament change. But it does show the time on it to show you how little time you have left in the day to play with this thing. Regarding the holder, I hate it. I just use it without it, in fact. The SR used to have a magnetic holder for a small touchscreen, which is really cool. You could just take it off the frame and put it back. And I guess they didn't do it with this because this is much bigger and it has a delicate clipper board in it and they didn't want someone like me dropping it and breaking it all the time. Butterfingers. The printer does, of course, have a 32-bit main board. You can't hear the stepper movers move at all, uh, but I can hear the part cooling fans because it does have dual part cooling fans. And I guess because it is a high-speed printer, it does need this. 
It is comparable to any other printer that has a dual part cooling fan still. For those of you not familiar with dialing in settings for a high speed printer, the term 400 millimeters per second can be a bit redundant because the actual speed is determined by the acceleration and jerk settings in your slicer. So if you try and print at 400 millimeters per second without changing these, you'll get 400 millimeters per second for some parts. So maybe the travel and infill might be quite high, but the outer perimeter will be quite low. So let's change these. How about 400 millimeters per second and 10K acceleration? And the best way to test this is, of course, the speedboat challenge. We have also tested how dimensionally accurate this printer is. So bombing around at 400 millimeters per second, you would think that it's a bit flingy with dimensional accuracy. The calibration cube came out well, and this is actually also made of ABS. So the PEI base is working really, really well. No warping or elephant's foot or anything like that. The clearance test went up to 0.3 millimeters when we were using high accelerations, but unfortunately 0.25 didn't budge. One issue I did have was that at these high speeds and accelerations, the support interface settings had some issues. I take a look at this CAD Bane I printed and you can see the scarring from the supports. It's not great, but not terrible. That phrase has dark connotations now. We also printed this gravity broom handle. So it has a nice gear made out of our satin PLA and our regular Eco PLA. Tolerances were really nice, it's very, very smooth. So there's always one thing I wanted to try with a high-speed printer, and that is print TPU. Coming from using Cartesians and older printers like that, I've been used to printing TPU at 40 to 50 millimeters per second. So can a Clipper Delta printer print TPU at 300 millimeters per second? Well, actually, yes, it can. And this is not because of Clipper, but this is because of the dual drive gear and the Volcano hot end, which are making it super easy to print TPU even at 300 millimeters per second. So who would want this? Well, everyone wants this. I want this, I want two. But let's look at the limits of the machine first. So firstly is the dual part cooling fans. Now, because there's two, it's gonna be louder than other printers, but it's still quite comparable to any other printer that does have dual part cooling fans. The other issue is that at high accelerations and high speeds, the part cooling fans are not enough. And I've noticed this with the Cad Bane model, where some of the support interface settings would actually stick to the model instead. And this is because the preceding layer of filament didn't have enough time to cool because it was going so fast. So that is one issue, and maybe if they had chosen the 5015 fan instead of dual part cooling fans, it might've been better. But considering the other advantages of this printer, it's a pretty small price to pay. So what's good about this printer? I mean, it has everything I love, but let's just forget about my whole Delta thing for the minute. It has an all metal hot end, a Volcano all metal hot end, direct drive on a Delta, clipper, high speed, Wi-Fi web interface. It has a filament sensor, auto level function. It has so many features, it's great. I love this thing. If you want to compare it against something else we have in the shop, something similar in build volume, then you could compare it to the CR10S Pro V2, which has 300 by 300 and 400 in the Z. But that's actually quite a smaller printer. So in terms of the footprint and, and the actual size of the device, this is considerably stockier. So if you want something smaller, then go for it. But you can't, can't compare a Delta with Clipper to something like a CR10S Pro or any other Cartesian printer. It just, it's, it's miles ahead of any of those printers. If you would like any more information about this printer, then drop a comment below or contact us via email. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.